Hey guys, today we're going to be chatting about everything pets and bringing animals into the island. Uh, we've all got furry friends and this is the process how to do it. We just want to thank all our subscribers out there. We've hit 1,800 subscribers thanks to you guys. Uh, everyone that's not subscribed, please subscribe to our channel. That's how we grow our channel. And this is our 50th video we've put out. So 50 videos today. It's been hard work, but it's been worth it. And we just want to thank everyone for their support. All the emails we receive and the business we received over the last four weeks, we want to thank all of our subscribers and our customers. So a big thank you. So here goes this week's video. So the big question, bringing pets into Mauritius. A lot of us have uh, furry babies, whether they be dogs or cats. And a lot of the questions we get on our channel and we're doing our consultations is about animals and how to import your animals into Mauritius. So I'm just going to run through a list. And the first thing we need to look at is dogs that are not allowed in Mauritius. So in the list I'm reading below here, American Pit Bull Terrier, American Staffordshire Terrier, Staffordshire Terrier, Blue Nose Pit Bull, Red Nose Pit Bull, Japanese Toso, Dog Argentino, Fila Ballesterio, and Burbul. So that's the list of dogs that are not allowed into Mauritius. Um, there, are, there is another list uh, and we can look at doing a special application if you're using the dog as a, as a pure bed breeding dog. Um, we can always go into that in a little bit of further detail. Okay, so those are the main breeds that are not allowed. Um, due to aggressive nature, the government had a few incidents where dogs had attacked people and they made a list of these dogs that aren't allowed in. So that's the first point of call is if your dog falls into those categories, you can give us a call and we'll have to make a special inquiry in with the state vet um, and there has to be uh, circumstances where they will allow that in, but it's highly unlikely. Okay, so next we're gonna discuss the process. So um, first thing you need to fill in is the application form. This application form is for to the state vet. Um, the following documents are required is a motivational letter, why you're importing the dog. So if you're moving over here as an expat, that you've come over on a permit, occupational permit, a retiree permit, or property purchase permit. Um, so you need to write a motivational letter. Second thing is you need a copy of the dog's vaccination card, that all these vaccinations are up to date. Third thing, which is quite a big surprise for a lot of our clients, is that they only accept sterilized animals. So if uh, little Bobby's got uh, a set hanging there between his legs, he's gonna get the snip. So um, yeah, they only accept sterilized dogs. So you need a, a letter from the vet saying that they've been sterilized. And I know um, in many other countries now they'll put an S on a, a tattoo on the dog's stomach to say that they are sterilized. Okay, point number four is if you're hiring a representative, uh, if we're gonna be doing the work for you as Rolf International, we need a letter from you stating that we are hired as your representative in Mauritius and that we'll do the import permit and we'll do the the clearing and transport of the animal from the airport to the quarantine facility. Okay, so now the next step is the tests required for the animals. So one of the, the main things in Mauritius is Mauritius doesn't have rabies. So that's the number one concern of the Mauritius government is rabies coming into, into the country. So the rabies test is quite a complicated test because you need to do the test four weeks uh, before and then you need to have a three month waiting time before you do the last test. So it takes four months before you're planning to relocate to get all your dog's paperwork together. The next big thing is that the animal has to be microchipped. So that's very important that your animal has been microchipped. And when the rabies tests are being conducted, um, that they're conducted by an English laboratory and it has to be done as a certified and verified laboratory in the country. So that they are a certified laboratory stating that the, the test has been done on this date by the dog with a microchip number and everything needs to be uh, in order. So signature of the person issuing the laboratory report, the test type and the test result, the date and the, of the test result, and the sample that has to be taken has to be more than 0.5 ml or IU. Um, if it's less than that, they do not accept it. So there's all these little implications that can be critical to your dog coming out here and being fun. Okay, so the next two medical tests the dog will have to incur is a test called Illyricia Canis Test. The next test after that is Brucella Canis Test. 
So I'll put both the, the words up in the, in the comments above. And these are the next two tests that have to be performed on the animals. Okay, so next thing, the, the people importing the dog will be issued a permit um, subject to some conditions. Okay, the conditions are that all the conditions above that all the tests have been met. There's availability in the quarantine center. Payment of an import fee of 500 rupees per an animal and a clearance fee of 500 rupees per an animal when they arrive. Okay. Due to the COVID situation prevailing worldwide, all animals have to come in under cargo. So no animals be permitted to fly on the plane as hand luggage or uh, sit on your lap during the flight. So all, all animals, all dogs will come in as cargo. Okay. Prior to arrival, four days before arrival of the dog or cat, uh, should be the, the quarantine center should be advised and so is the state vet. So it's the sending an email through saying that the, the animal is about to leave four days before they're about to leave and give them the flight details so that the quarantine center can have a vehicle available to collect them from the airport. So that's one of the main things. Okay. Post arrival, um, cost of, of kenneling the animals, uh, very, very cheap. It's 15 rupees per day. Um, our dogs were, were in the facility for three months. That was the quarantine back when we arrived. From South Africa, the quarantine has now been dropped to 30 days. And from anywhere in Europe, the quarantine is five days. So you will pay, be charged 15 rupees per day per an animal in quarantine. Um, next thing is food and visiting hours. Um, food, you can bring your own food for the animals. So uh, they do mix up rice and that at the quarantine area, but we bought our own tin food and own pellets for our dogs and they, they'll kindly feed your dogs every day for you. So people want to know, can they visit their pets? Yes, you can. Okay. So there are visiting hours, Monday to, to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. So in the caged area where the dogs are in their kennels, they've got a big play area, which is fenced and grassed. And then you go and you come into the quarantine facility, you sign in, and then you go and collect your dogs with a handler. And they let you walk your dogs through on a lead into the play area and you can let them go and they run around and you can play with them. We used to typically spend about 45 minutes a day with them um, and Sundays the quarantine facility is closed. Okay, so you are allowed to drop uh, your dog's own blankets and basket and chew toys and that that is, is, uh, is permitted uh, in the kennels and the kennels are, they, they would lift them up every day and they spray and clean the kennels each day. Okay, so next thing, okay. Feeding and other necessities for the uh, food for dog and cat must be provided by the individual owner. In the case, uh, cat litter must also be provided. So cat litter must also be provided for cats. Okay, so guys, that's the that's the process. We do handle this whole process. So if you want to outsource the process to us and have our administrators handle this process, we would make the initial booking with the airline and the pet handling company. Once the dog got here, we would handle the customs clearance uh, procedures and we would make sure the dog got into the quarantine and that everything was facilitated by us. Um, and, and that we'd also check the documentation that everything was correct on the dog's arrival. And we have direct communications with the state vet. So, yep, that's it, guys. We know you want to bring all your furry friends. They are welcome in Mauritius. Uh, I know a lot of us, uh, we, we came over with three dogs. We had one big burbul before they were not on the, the band list and two fox terriers. And that uh, was the best thing we ever did. We brought the, brought the dogs with. And they were super happy. Uh, they'd never been to the beach before. And they really enjoyed living in Mauritius. They've all passed on because they were we've been here so long now. And uh, we've replaced them with local dogs. But yeah, uh, as expats, I understand that you want to bring your, your dogs with. And you are welcome. And that the process is, is lengthy. Um, and there is a lot of paperwork uh, required. But it's totally worth it. Um, you're looking at a cost of about 1200 to 1400 per pet dollars. So it's not cheap to bring your animals across, but it's definitely worthwhile. So if you need help in this, you can email us on info at rolfinternational.com. Give us a shout and see you next week. Ciao, guys.